Hello, my name is Mike Alvering and welcome back to the Boater Channel. Today we're talking tires, specifically how to choose the right tire for your performance car, how to size it correctly, how to make that choice, and what to do. So this video is going to split up, be split up into a few sections. First is what is the application you know, that you're sizing these tires for, uh, and then secondly, what size to get. And then we're going to discuss some of the into the weed stuff at the end. Um, but first of all, what is the application? I have a bunch of Michelin tires here, plus a Pirelli. Um, from left to right, just to show you what I have, I have a Sport Cup 2R, uh, a Sport Cup 2, a PS4S, and then a snow tire right here from my previous car. Um, so I'm a big Michelin guy, so I'm gonna give you some ideas, Michelin tires wise, what you can do. What's the application? We need to figure out where is this car getting driven, right? Is this your personal car? Is this a track car? Um, the first kind of realm is just a street car, right? Here you can have almost any street tire. And you know, if you're watching this video for like just a normal street car that doesn't have any performance bits, uh, right? It's probably isn't the right video for you. But uh, for someone that wants a little more performance, right? You could have something like the Michelin Pilot, uh, Pilot Sport 4, which is uh, a run down from the Sport 4S uh, or the Pilot Sport a AS3. Those are both really good tires. You can see a bunch of good tire reviews on them. Um, what about if you're driving a street car, occasionally at a track day, maybe I'll take it to one track day and autocross here and there. This is where the PS4S really shines. Um, I'm a big fan of it. I had them on my tire until I switched to Cup 2s and they are a really, really good street tire. I will say the best street tire money can buy. There's really nothing that can compare um, to the safety uh, of the tire, both in its construction and in uh, hydroplaning resistance and stuff like that while at the same time giving you a ton of really good performance. So I'm a big fan of the PS4S. Uh, for a car that's kind of on street, kind of on track, that's where the Cup 2 starts to come in. Uh, the Cup 2 is obviously a really good track tire. I'm sure most people have heard of it. Um, and then the next level up would be a Cup 2R, uh, which again is kind of pushing you further into the less good on the road setting. For a dedicated track car, you're probably gonna wanna consider something else. You either wanna be more sticky, right? On like a Hoosier or a Slick, or something a little more affordable, right? If you're running through tires all the time with a track car, it doesn't make sense to buy really expensive tires, you know, $2,000 for a set. Uh, that just financially doesn't, doesn't really make much sense. An important thing to note when selecting any tire, whether it's a street tire, uh, a slightly more dedicated street tire, or a track tire, you wanna consider the consequences that that decision is gonna have. There's some simple stuff that you may not think of, like oil starvation. If you're increasing your level of mechanical grip to a significantly higher place than where it was originally, you need to think about how your engine's being lubricated, right? If your car was designed to pull, you know, 0.8 Gs and all of a sudden you're pulling 1.1, you need to think about if that's affecting your engine, right? Is this a car that was made for track performance? It's got a dry sump, it's got really good, uh, you know, a really good oiling system, or is this a car that, you know, you're gonna blow up the motor if you take a corner at, you know, 110 miles an hour? That's something to consider. Uh, increased wear and suspension components. That's another big one. Bushings, I'm talking bushings and, and things like that. Not actually the parts that are suspending, but things that are connecting uh, the geometries underneath your car. Those are gonna get a lot more increased wear. Uh, the forces on them is gonna be a lot higher and they were not designed for it. So you need to think about, uh, am I choosing a tire that's appropriate for my suspension? Poor streetability is another one to consider. Obviously, something like a Cup 2R, um, is going to be really bad on the street. It's going to uh, exhibit a lot of poor handling characteristics in the cold. Uh, it's going to have a really stiff sidewall, so the ride's going to be worse. That's something that I've definitely noticed from switching from PS4S's to Cup 2's. Expense is another big one, right? You don't want to be having a tire that's not going to last very long and is also very expensive. You also want to consider your increased wear on your brakes. If you're, if you're going from a more street tire to a more track tire, you need to think about A, the wear on your brakes, whether you want to pay to do your brakes more frequently, and B, whether your brakes can actually take the amount of braking force that you're gonna apply. If you're going to a track day on a very sticky tire, if your brake system is not up to snuff, you're gonna overheat your brakes really bad. So you wanna make sure that you're not overdriving uh, the car when you have a stickier tire on it. And just to limit yourself, maybe by choosing a tire that doesn't have as much stick. Ride quality, I touched on that a second ago. Usually as you go up the rung in stickiness, the sidewall is going to get stiffer. With a stiffer sidewall, usually your sidewall does a decent amount of suspension uh, with ironing out all the little, little bumps in the road. And with a stiffer sidewall, those are obviously going to be amplified much greater than they would be normally. Weather dependency is another thing to consider. Are your tires going to be driven in cold temperatures, when it snows, when there's ice, stuff like that? Even a PS4S really should not be driven in the winter. 
Weather dependency. You want to think about what weather these tires are going to get used in. Are these just summer tires that are, you know, the car is going away for the winter? Uh, are these tires that are three season tires, right? Are you going to switch to snow tires or something like this when it gets cold outside? Or are you going to stay on the same tire year round? You want to think about what kind of situation your car is going to be driven in. Are you taking your car on a long road trip? Are you driving somewhere over the winter to go visit family over Christmas or something, right? You don't want to buy a tire that you end up getting stuck with or hurting yourself with while being forced to drive in conditions that the tire was not designed for. Lastly, you want to think about longevity. How long do you want this tire to last? Where do you want it to last a long time? Is this a tire that you want to last a long time at the track, on the street? What is your purpose for this tire and what are you hoping to get out of it? So obviously I'm not going to create an extensive list of every tire out there for every application, but I hope that you guys can go out and look at TireRack.com and stuff like that to determine kind of what tire compound wise you want to choose and for your application, what, what you're going to be driving the tire in. And now for the important part, which is how to size your tire, which I see a lot of improper sizings at the track on the street all over the place. It's really easy to tell when someone has not sized their tire properly, specifically for performance. If you want to have a stance car or if you want to slam your Huracan, right, this is not the video for you, right? You're just going to do that for aesthetics. I'm talking performance cars. You want to take your car to the next level. You want to take your performance car and make it even better. You want to size the tires correctly, which is what we're going to talk about now. The most important aspect of tire size is tread width, which is the measured width of the actual tread itself. This is different from section width. Section width is going to be different than the tread width that's printed on the tire. A 265, a 305, a 315, a 245, those are all stated widths, which are not going to necessarily correspond to the actual tread width of the tire. Section width, which is given by the manufacturer, can change depending on what brand you're looking at, and even within the same manufacturer, what tire you're looking at. Whether that is changing from a Cup 2 to a Cup 2R, or whether you're even looking at cup twos, looking at non-OE sizes to OE sizes. Those can change your section width uh, or your tread width compared to the same section width. Because section width is non-standardized and tread width is measured, there's a great resource for figuring out the tread width on any given tire, and that's through TireRack.com. TireRack measures section width by using a ruler that has a 30 degree angle in it, and they measure the actual width of the tread going across. This is something that Tire Rack has figured out themselves and they have standardized it amongst the tires that they say. If you go online, you can see for every given tire, they give the section width even through the OE and non-OE configurations. This is the important thing to look for. Now that you know how to find tread width, the other important thing to know is the width of your wheel. This on, for example, my Corvette has a 12 inch wide wheel in the back and in the front, a nine and a half inch wheel. I'm gonna use those measurements, the 12 and nine and a half, and then find tires with tread widths corresponding to those. The important thing is to stay under your actual wheel width with the tread width. If I have a 12 inch wide wheel, I wanna choose a tire that is 12 inches or less. And the or less is about half an inch is a good rule of thumb. So an example of that is the Corvette rear wheel here. This wheel, as I said, is 12 inches wide. And so I wanted to find a tire that was less than 12 inches in tread width down to about 11 and a half. You don't want to stretch too much on your tire, but you do want a little bit of stretch in the sidewall. So these cup twos are in, I think the tread width is 11.6, right? So you can see there's a bit of stretch on this wheel um, compared to a tire that was actually 12 inches wide. You can go too far in both directions. Obviously, I would not recommend anyone go over the width of their wheel with the width of their tire. That's a bad idea. If you go over, the sidewall is gonna bulge. This is gonna result in your car feeling a little sloppy. There's gonna be too much actual suspension happening in the tire itself, and it's gonna squirm. The tread blocks are gonna squirm. It's gonna overheat. This is a bad thing to do if you are looking to have good performance out of your tires. The same can be bad going too narrow. If you go too narrow on a tire, the sidewall can be preloaded too much. It's good to have a little preload in the sidewall. Sidewall. What I mean by that is you want your sidewall to be bent in a little bit. What this is going to allow is it's taking some of the uh, force and already applying it. So when you go into a corner, that sidewall is already loaded and it's not going to have any squirm as you're going through the corner. A sidewall that's stretched is also going to be too narrow and cause the tire to not flex as much and it's not going to be as compliant through bumps. You do want a bit of suspension happening with the tire, but not too much. It's basically gonna ride poorly, 
over bumps, it's gonna be really bumpy. And as it breaks away, it's gonna snap really hard because there's no amount of shimmy that it's allowed to do when it's actually on the wheel. This is something that you'll see with like stance cars and stuff like that, where they have a, you know, an 11 inch wide wheel on their mounting and nine inch wide tire on it, right? Where you have that super, super preloaded sidewall. And that's just gonna make the car handle really poorly. Again, going too wide is also gonna make it handle poorly, right? You're gonna have tread blocks squirm, the tire itself is gonna shimmy too much and suspend the car too much, and it's just not a good idea. So the key is to go at that, at that wheel width or less by half an inch, right, as, as we said earlier. Now you wanna think about if you're buying wheels and tires, right, if you're fully refreshing the situation on your car. What people think about all the time when they're buying wheels and tires is they find a wheel that they like and then they buy tires for it. And for performance, you should really go the other way around. You should determine what tire you're looking to run on your car and depending on the handling characteristics you want and your sidewall and all that kind of stuff, and then choose a wheel that fits that tire. That's the better way to go about things. You wanna make sure you have enough sidewall, right? If, right? if you have a Dodge Charger that you're looking to have it handle better, that doesn't necessarily need, need a 22 inch uh, wheel on it, right? Where you're gonna have no sidewall and there's gonna be no compliance there. It's actually better to have a little bit of sidewall. Obviously the factory settings are gonna be the best situation, but a little bit, a little bit of sidewall is what you want. You don't wanna go too wide on your tires a larger width can negatively impact your handling characteristics while not really improving your grip by that much. Obviously, you wanna make sure that everything that you're buying is gonna fit within your wheel wells. The last thing you wanna be doing is cutting and trying to make stuff fit where stuff's rubbing, right? That's not ideal. Uh, you also want them to fit over your brakes. So you wanna get a, a wheel that's large enough to fit over your brakes. If you're planning to upgrade your brakes, like a lot of you know Miatas do and stuff like that, you wanna make sure that your wheel is gonna be big enough to cover those, you know, that wheel wood brake kit that you're gonna put on in the future. A lot of people have the misconception that adding a wider wheel and tire package is gonna improve your grip and improve the handling characteristics, which is not the case. The factor that's at play here is called the total tread surface area, which during your contact patch is the amount of surface area that is touching the ground. Um, with a wider wheel at the same pressure, your surface area doesn't change. Luckily, a wider wheel allows you to lower your pressure a little bit, which will give you more surface. The most important aspect of the surface area is how heat management occurs within the tire. You want a larger surface area if you're looking to get a heavier car to go faster, right? The main reason to change your tread surface area is as it relates to heat, right? So say if we have, for example, my Corvette and I wanna get really fast at autocross. I don't necessarily wanna have a 12 inch wide tire on the front and the back if I was going for a new setup because that 12 inch wide front is never gonna heat up enough, right? That surface area that that tire is generating is too large to get the amount of heat that I would need to get in the tire for it to grip hard. So for a heavier car, right, a wider tire sometimes makes sense, but for lighter tires, like a Lotus Elise, for example, if you're putting a 265 on a Lotus Elise, uh, you're never gonna get heat in those tires. On a cold day, you're gonna spin on track, it's not gonna be fun. Um, while at the same time, if you put a really narrow tire on a big, heavy, powerful car and try to go to a track day, those tires are gonna overheat really badly. So you wanna make sure with a wheel and tire package that you're thinking about heat management and thinking about what is the optimal running temperature of these tires, how heavy is my car, and how that's gonna impact what your setup is. If you don't know all of those things yet, you should probably look into them before buying a wheel and tire package. All right, so let's have a quick discussion with OE and non-OE tire sizes. But OE is the original equipment. Basically, Porsche, Ford, every, every manufacturer, when they develop a performance car, is going to work with a tire company to make a special tire for that car. For example, the Mustang GT350R comes from the factory with Sport Cup 2. They look like these tires right here. The important thing about the Mustang is that Ford was looking to get more performance out of the Sport Cup 2, and this was before the Sport Cup 2R was introduced. So what Ford did is they took the newer Sport Cup 2R mold that wasn't totally released yet, and they used the Sport Cup 2 compound on that mold. Obviously, this is gonna change the car a little bit. And this happens with tons of manufacturers and tons of cars. If your car came from the factory on PS4S's, that's an OE tire, they may actually be a stickier compound than the Cup 2's. So you need to be cognizant of what tire came on your car and what OE size and OE compound configuration uh, came from the factory. So that's obviously going to increase or decrease your grip levels a lot. For the most part, manufacturers are going to use stickier compounds on the OE tires uh, than they would on a normal, you know, on a normal Cup 2 or something like that. 
You're also gonna have some different stuff like for a Porsche, for example, a 911. That's gonna have a rear tire that's a lot stronger, right? It's, it's, it has a lot more weight happening to it. There's more forces happening in the back. And so that whole compound itself is gonna be more resilient to what's happening there. And you wouldn't wanna mount that tire on a big uh, front engine uh, car because it's not gonna have the same characteristics. So it's important to use OE tires on your OE car if you wanna maintain that uh, programmed level of grip and compliance and all that kind of stuff that the manufacturer intended. If you're going to a non-OE setup, uh, try your best to look into what tire has a similar compound or, you know, as we talked about earlier, going through the list and figuring out what the application is. Occasionally, for example, for this 315 uh, and this Sport Cup 2, I couldn't get a Sport Cup 2 that wasn't this Ford OE compound. And so obviously it's not necessarily ideal to get an OE tire for a whole different car, but in this case it was all that was available. Um, and on top of that, uh, weight distribution wise, they're pretty similar. So uh, front engine, rear drive, it's gonna be a, a similar setup. So I thought that was okay. Uh, but it, for the most part, you don't wanna do that. And I, if I had the choice to choose the Ford OE tire or a normal Sport Cup 2, I would choose the normal Sport Cup 2. Last thing I wanna briefly mention is the UTQG, uh, which is the tread wear rating that each tire will have. So for example, the PS4S is a 300, the Sport Cup 2 is a 160, and I think the Cup 2R is like an 80 or something. The important thing to know is that these numbers don't matter and they don't mean anything. These numbers are arbitrarily set up by the tire manufacturer and they are no way standardized across the industry. It's basically what, for example, Michelin thinks you're gonna expect from the tire. It has nothing to do with testing that's standardized across the board or anything like that. So do not look at tread wear rating as the end all be all, how grippy is this tire gonna be? Because even, for example, with this tire, right, this is probably stickier than a normal Sport Cup 2 because it's in the Sport Cup 2R mold and they, you know, Ford probably meddled with this a little bit. And so even within the same 160 tread wear, it's not even the same tire. So you really don't want to look at treadwear ratings as the uh, determining factor for how sticky a tire is going to be. The only time it's semi-useful is looking at, the, at looking at tires within the same brand. They're going to use the same testing procedures to figure out uh, and determine what kind of UTQG to put on their tires. But as you go from brand to brand, uh, that rating kind of goes out the window for any meaningfulness behind it. So I hope you enjoyed this quick deep dive into a tire conversation and how to properly size tires from your car. I hope it made sense. If you guys have any questions, obviously post them in the comments. I'm going to respond to everything I can. And I hope that you guys can properly size tires for performance in your car to increase the performance, not just for looks or anything like that. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.